experience. All right, so now that you got the gist of it, moving on to the next section. Um, promoting Black-owned businesses. And I usually have about um, three to four. Today I only really got two. I got three, but um, for all intents and purposes, I'm going to uh, say the third one. I actually only really have two. Um, and you will find out why as I go further into it. But um, since I started this format um, where I'm uh, promoting the black owned businesses and my reason for promoting black owned businesses is again to show a positive frame of reference that, you know, we are not these negative images that you hear and see that we are captains of industry, that we are not lazy, we're not stupid. We can do things to help ourselves and we enjoy helping one another. So the black owned businesses that I promote are usually people, just regular people um, that don't have a lot of, uh, you know, college um, education or maybe they do got some college education, but you know, they wanted to do something in life that was beyond their expertise or beyond what they went to school for. But, you know, they took a walk, leap of faith and decided to follow their heart and, you know, open the business. And not only open the business, um, allow the business to be able to do for the community that it was rooted in. So meaning like they can hire their own um do some type of philanthropy or charity, such as like, you know, um, donating to a, a food bank or feeding the homeless or back to school drives or uh, just um, teaching financial literacy and doing things to basically impact and empower the community, not just being a drain on the resources in the community, just not just want somebody to support your business just because you're black like oh bro i got my own business come support you know this is why uh this don't work because black people don't support each other and da, 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 da. but it's like what are you doing for the community you want the community to get behind you what are you prepared to do for the community so those are the type of uh, black owned businesses that i um choose to uh sp um spotlight that's a, a perfect segue for another segment I got coming up pretty soon in during the podcast, but I'm not there yet. Um, so, yeah, that's what I'm about to do is just uh, spotlight these um, black owned businesses with the, uh, check those uh, boxes in my criteria. And the last caveat to. Uh, that section is um, a theme. It also aligns, uh, the black owned businesses also align up with a monthly theme that I do every month. Since I started, um, since I started my uh, format for this podcast. Um, this month's theme is just spring, the uh, season of spring. So all the black owned businesses that I've been promoting kind of, in my mind, this is like the first thing, you know, that hints at the season of spring. So things you would, you know, patronize during the spring month. So that's my logic behind my uh, businesses that I've been um, promoting all throughout, you know, the month of, uh, months of spring, which started like in... Um, or which, which started in my mind, like in March, you know, for, you know, being in America, that's what we think of the month that uh, we associate spring with. So anyway, so my uh, spring theme for uh, this week is, um, 
people are getting out, they're going outside, doing a whole lot of outside activity. And kind of the first thing that popped into my mind was horseback riding, equestrian. So these next black owned businesses kind of, um, or do not kind of, they are, you know, uh, black horse ranches. So the first black owned business I will be promoting is SOFA, SUFA, which is an acronym for a uh, stretch out on faith. And their website is sufaranch.com. And the founder, the founder's name is Daryl Fletcher. They're located in Palomina, Georgia at 7360 Old Rico Road. And the zip code is 30268. Telephone number is 877-866-9800. One eight, and I'm assuming you probably got a dial of one first because it doesn't seem toll free. Um, he started it and launched uh, the business in August 18th. So it's actually a um, horse ranch slash nonprofit. So meaning like they actually, you know, teach, um, have rider lessons, um, they also rent the facility. You got also rent the uh, facility for um, functions and gatherings. Um, his background uh, with, you know, equestrian, uh, he basically grew up on a farm. He would take uh, trips over the summer growing up to his uh, grandparents' farms. And he developed, you know, the love for animals and um riding horses. Um, he's also in his uh, background, he has a religious background. He subscribes to the uh, Christian faith. He's a devout Christian and he used to be a, a youth pastor. So, you know, he wanted to combine his love for animals and, you know, love for God and the love for his community, his children. Um, children. Um, so that's basically what he does is he um, teaches like, a, I guess it's something like new age um, equestrian therapy. That's for the nonprofit. This is like therapy for through riding horses. So they explore your feelings and emotions and all that good stuff. And then you also on his ranch has, has uh, rider lessons um, and then um, guided tours over the trail, you know, because that uh, stretch of um, land that they're on is scenic and historic. And, he, you know, does guided tours telling you about the, uh, the land mass and such. So which is more than amazing, definitely checks out all the boxes. He's doing for the community. Uh, he's doing something that he loves, he's getting paid for doing something that he loves. Figured out a way just to make it all work. You know what I mean? That's basically what this section is about, just um, figuring out your situation, making it work, and being able to help others. And then I'm going to go a bit on a side tangent. Uh, we were the original cowboys. Matter of fact, the term cowboy is actually a derogatory term used to um, dehumanize ranch hands back in the day. It was just like, hey, boy, is that what? go uh, herd those cows. And that's kind of how the word just kind of um, manifests. 
And so like we created cowboy culture. We were the original ranch hands. Then also, um, you know, if we're going to keep it a buck, if we're going to keep it a million, we created country western, the genre of country western music. I mean, we created all music, but we created country uh, western music too. And um, yeah, so any type of country western theme or nuance you can think of, we originated that. That was all black people. Like we even uh, superseded the Spanish gaucho. Um, Also, you know, uh, the legend of uh, the Lone Ranger was based off of uh, a man by the name of Bass Reeves. Bass Reeves was like the first uh, U.S. Marshal. It's true. So, you know, I didn't mean to go on a super duper long tangent, but I just wanted to establish the fact of, you know, we are the original indigenous people and you don't have to feel weird about liking riding horses. You don't have to feel like that's corny or that's for white people when when in reality, we started it. They just, um, you know, pardon the pun, whitewashed it. Now, um, on to the uh, next black owned business. And there are thousands, literally thousands of black owned ranches and uh, black owned uh, equestrian businesses. But um, just, you know, these is like, I don't try to spend hours upon hours researching the uh, types of uh, black owned businesses that I share for this uh, podcast, but, you know, I just find out ones that stand out in my mind and try to find a way to make it work and fit in, fit, you know, fit into my narrative for this uh, podcast. Um, The next one is Urban Cowgirl Ranch. And the website is urbancowgirl.com. So it's originally mulattomeadows.com, but I don't know, for some odd reason, they did a a site change, and then it directs you to, when you go to Mulatto Meadows, it directs you to um, urbancowgirls.com. So that's, again, another, like, it's a... um, Again, another, uh, what I'm trying to think, say it's like a business slash nonprofit organization. So it's like they make money, but then they also service the community. Like they do also, they do it for a personal profit, but then they also service the community as well. And like having like businesses slash nonprofits is a good way to, you know, get around the Uncle Sam. So it's like, you know, all their expenses is like write offs and they can funnel it back into the business. And basically, that's how you get paid for doing something you love to do. And the uh, person's name, the main person, she has an actual team, but the uh, person that organized this uh, organization is Bree Noble. 
So Bree grew up with horses. She always uh, was a rider. She was involved in 4-H. 